Hello and welcome to IndiaIndependentFilms.com. This is our very first interview for our website. We have Srinivas Sundarajan here, the director of Greater Elephant, and uh, he's here to talk about independent films and the independent scene in India. All right, Srinivas, thank you so much for uh, coming for this interview today about uh, Indian independent film. Yeah. And um, let's get right into it. Let's talk about your uh, second feature film, right? Uh, Greater Elephant. Um, it, it did very well at the South Asian uh, International Film Festival in New York late last year. And um, I believe a uh, premiere in Pune is happening on the, 19th of on the 19th of October. So tell us a little bit about the challenges of making that film. Uh, my first film was called the Untitled Karthi Christmas Project, which was made on a budget of 40,000. Yeah. So, I mean, this time we didn't make a film on 40,000, but the challenge this time was because we, we had a time constraint this time around. Mm -hmm. Last time I made a film which spanned over a year. This time mm -hmm. I made a film which took 10 days to make. Okay. So also because uh, a lot of permissions, logistics and all revolved around those 10 day periods because mm -hmm. uh, we were we shot it in uh, Pune mm -hmm. but not, not in Bombay because uh, again we were getting permissions over there, Bombay becoming more expensive. Okay, yeah. So as a result a lot of things had to, I mean the 10 day was like our magical figure mm -hmm. in some way. So most of it revolved around that so that was one of the biggest challenge of trying to execute because there are so many location changes happening and there are so many characters. So managing everything and stuff was one of the uh, highlights, I would say, not the challenge in yeah. the way of the film. That's extraordinary though, 10, ten days, yeah. a feature film. Yeah. I mean, generally, they take <laughs> feature films can take upwards of a year even. And your last film uh, itself took a long time, correct? And because of the budgetary constraints in that, compare the issues uh, in terms of um, money and finances. Yeah. with the your first film and Greater Elephant? Uh, the first thing was that my the first film that I made was not supposed to uh, be for a, a year. Mm -hmm. I had kind of scheduled it in such a way that I needed 15 days, okay. which, which was over weekends. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's I started out not with the intention that this is what the budget should be of the film. I was like, it will be a low budget film in some way. Mm -hmm. But one thing led to the other and stuff, which is why uh, that film took so much time. So knowing, you know, the kind of uh, uh, limitations I had. So when we went into making Greater Elephant, one of the first things that I wanted to do was not to make a film for over a year. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I, I kind of believe in the notion that if something is planned really well, so we took three months of pre-production time, you know, so right. we kind of figured locations, logistics, actors, actors, dates and rehearsals so because we took so much time in the pre-production we could finish it in 10 days mm -hmm. so we everyone was briefed everyone knew what we were getting into everyone knew what they had so, to do yeah so that way i think it it's something that could have been managed uh, i mean i could have taken even 25 days or even a month mm -hmm. to finish the film but i felt that because of the kind of challenges that you face as an indie filmmaker yeah uh, i mean we had to do it that kind of yeah. And obviously there was there's a little bit of compromises that happened, but uh, uh, it doesn't show in the film. That was what one of the thing was. Yeah. So the interesting thing about Greater Elephant is that after the whole movie was made, um, you're still looking for a distributor and you're still looking to get it into theaters around the world. Um, most films, that's not the case. After they're made, it's they already generally have a distributor. So you've gone towards uh, unique avenues to get this film into theater. So why don't you talk a little bit about that? Uh, one of the uh, prime reasons why uh, films like Greater Elephant doesn't get a distributor is because at least back here, uh, distributors look at name. Mm -hmm. Like there needs to be a big star so as to get the film out. Yeah. And uh, since there were a lot of challenge, I mean, challenges before, so there was no time to look out for a distributor because we had just managed to get some finances going on for making the film. Uh -huh. Now, after having made the film, we tried like, you know, contacting uh, distributors at various festivals and stuff, but it's still a big challenge, you know, in trying to get them hooked on to the project, get them interested in terms of what can you do. Mm -hmm. So usually you make a film, I mean, you raise money to make a film or you, you know, for post-production. I thought maybe it might be a unique thing that now that the film is done, I just need to get it to the theatres. 
and just to take care of like the cost for rental renting a theater advertising mm-hmm. pr and marketing i thought maybe we could come up with a figure and just you see it as an experiment in some way mm-hmm. and uh, because it's very new it had just come i mean the platform was launched some 3 months ago mm-hmm. so it was just a very new thing and people over here might be quite interested in some way that is why i used uh, crowdfunding mm-hmm. also because it's a i mean it's something which is for me what i've uh, mentioned this before also is that it's for the people by the people to the exactly. people you know in some kind mm-hmm. so crowdfunding is a very indie process when it comes to uh, raising funds or something because you can collaborate with people who otherwise have no idea as to how to be a part of a film mm-hmm. and so i thought maybe that would be an interesting uh, hook for them you know yeah. to be on board with the film which is why i kind of used crowdfunding so was the whole crowdfunding thing successful yeah i mean uh, we kind of raised 90% of what our target amount was in some way and uh, i'm not disappointed because uh, we only used facebook twitter and all the social medias that uh, were available to us to market it so it kind of generated a lot of curiosity in people because even the print coverage that followed didn't mm-hmm. have the link but at least people knew that there is an indie film that is being crowd funded and uh, so i mean i think as a seed it kind of has been sown well so i guess now we need to wait till it uh, develops concrete like stronger mm-hmm. roots or something so is it something you would use in the future yeah i'm actually like again toying around with an idea uh, for i mean for the next film that i am doing is to try and see if i can actually involve people before right from the conceptual stage because that's the old school way of doing it mm-hmm. and uh, let's see i mean i'm just like looking at it i'm also talking to them because now they are also aware of the kind of market they have in india like right. is it is it working for them it shouldn't be that okay you know because i'm not a uh well known name as such so that you know to for us also to raise money through people or getting people to know who i am will take some time so i'm just i don't actually mind i actually believe in that whole concept of crowdfunding in some way because uh i don't think we are running away with the money you know <laughs> we are just being transparent just to make a film so let's switch gears a bit uh to uh content um greater elephant is a lot lighter in tone than your first film yeah um what interested you about the the lighter aspect of this film oh uh, actually i would credit that to omkar who uh, wrote the film because the earlier concept that i had was a mahud losing his elephant and then a complete dark <laughs> descent into gloom and stuff you know that oh i've lost that kind of stuff so yeah. the first screenplay that i had written had a lot of dark elements to it in terms of you know he doesn't find the elephant then he gets into some kind of trouble uh which is not there right now he gets into trouble but it's a different way of doing it yeah. so when i got in touch with omkar to you know figure out how we could do it and that's when we thought of the whole black satire black comedy kind of mm-hmm. uh, genre to mm-hmm. tackle with because that's something which is very new and sometimes you know the seriousness of it all gets dissolved in the comedy and also the comicness comes out because of the seriousness so it's like a mm-hmm. balance between that and since i'd already done a slightly dark surreal thing in my first film i thought it would be an interesting thing to kind of to make keep it more lighter in some way also because my family saw my first film and then they were like you know is this what you think about life and stuff so i was like this time i'll just play safe and just like make a film which they can laugh about in some way which did you enjoy more the the lighter aspect or the darker aspect i actually am open to all like okay. that kind of stuff because it's i mean filmmaking or storytelling depends on moods in mm-hmm. a lot of ways so sometimes you're in a phase of complete darkness mm-hmm. like this kind and especially in the field like the field that we are in yeah so sometimes you get absorbed so much in that black hole of depression and stuff so you want to make a dark film whereas sometimes because of the kind of support you're getting and you're like okay let's make a light film in some way so i think mine is more like mood based in some way so i am open to both i am comfortable in both the things i mean because the response has been good for yeah. both the films so i'm happy that okay i can kind of do justice to both these more what do you call genres genres in some way, yeah. yeah um this being your second feature film before the first two films feature films you've done you did a lot of short films yeah and talk to me about the difference in approach from a short film and a feature film and the uh, challenges there actually it the the shift from short films to feature was also gradual like it wasn't like my woke up one day and i said okay i'm making a feature film mm-hmm. 
so uh, i think it's just the way the process started affecting me rather than the script mm-hmm. because for short films i knew this is what it is and this is what i want to do and uh, so uh, again the involvement was still the same like you're actually going to spend a month in pre prod and then making the film those kind of stuff over here also i didn't actually give it much of a thought that oh i want to like for example now i'm planning to make a short film but it's difficult for me to get back whereas uh-huh. earlier it was like a gradual thing yeah. because i didn't think about it if you think about it i feel then you just lose the plot mm-hmm. so for me it was just gradual which just came in so i think i made three short films and then the second film uh, the first film just happened as such and mm-hmm. i just kept shooting and then finally when we i chopped the film completely it was a 75 minute film and that's when i think i went to the khan website or something to figure out what is a feature length and it said 60 minutes and above is feature okay so i was like yeah but then sundan said 75 minutes and above is feature so it just differs so yeah, story based yeah essentially that's good so talk to me about uh, your next project and what that's going to be about yeah so uh, now it's almost a year since i finished making great elephant with the kind of mm-hmm. uh, push that the elephant required uh, i am actually now working on my next film which is actually a science fiction film uh, science so fiction yeah so okay. it's like a, a drama set in space <laughs> all right and no earth nothing so it's just in space uh, four indian astronauts who are uh, stuck in space and then they are confronted by a beam Okay, and that's what the story is about, like in some way. So, what are the budgetary constraints with that? Obviously, same thing. Same thing. Same. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, again, it's like a challenge because if you ask me what is easier, uh-huh. I would always say it's a challenge to make something in a smaller budget because you aren't uh, compromised. You know, if it's a lo- bigger budget, you need to justify every penny. You know, mm-hmm. like oh, this is I'm doing it because this much money is put in. So some decisions are made for you because of. The yeah, the weight is yeah, and also the fact is, I think I find it more comfortable in the uh, the space that we are in of making films in a X amount of budget, so that it doesn't like burn a hole in our hearts. <laughs> It's already burnt a hole in the pocket, but not in the heart. So again, trying, I'm just seeing it. It might work, it might not work, but uh-huh. I'm just like challenging myself so that one, you know, so that you kind of evolve also as a filmmaker, producer, in those kind of things. It's like science fiction as uh-huh. of now, but let's see. So. Being an uh, independent filmmaker in India, in my opinion, the scene is is blowing up right now. There are so many filmmakers here that are trying to do th- the same thing that you're doing, you know, films on a budget and any, everything like that. Where do you see where do you see the the movement going in this country? Actually, I'm 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 actually seeing it going nowhere. 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 Because Why is that? The, the problem is that a lot of people are using the vocab of. indie cinema mm-hmm. to make their kind of film okay now if that their kind of film doesn't work the blame comes to indie cinema mm-hmm. because they're like oh, that's what we've been doing problem is that people like us get stuck because that's what we've been trained or we've been doing it for a long time now also the fact is there is a, there is a kind of uh, at least in india what i've noticed is that anything new or anything unique has to be exploited to the extreme mm-hmm. so everything is blown out of proportion so now like 2 years back nobody knew what independent films or indie films were now every tom dick and harry knows what an indie film is and he's an indie filmmaker uh-huh. uh uh i'm not saying it's bad okay right. as long as it's you know it's creating awareness among people and not spite so you talked about how independent filmmakers and the independent genre cannot be defined there's a spirit but i found at least in america in terms of independent films there's certain uh topics that are confined at least perception wise you know they're gritty taboo risque very dark and uh do you feel it's the same here in in india and if so what other topics should be included uh no actually it's I beg to differ in terms of the independent scene and the topics. I think it's more because of the censorship that's prevalent over here mm-hmm. in terms of all these things. I mean, it doesn't start from like the government, but from the family. Yeah. So when you're when you are being, uh, you know, schooled or something, there are a lot of topics that you are told to stay away from, uh-huh. like violence, sex, and all those kind of stuff. Whereas, stay to the family. You know, keep family this thing. those kind of stuff so the the problem becomes that and as 
if you enter into a uh, film school or if you enter there you've been told to you know steer clear of all that stuff what you learned in the family because now you need to tackle the underworld you need to tackle the darkness the negative yeah. forces shark and all yeah mm-hmm. and so what happens is that because there is no uh, vent for that it can be easily tagged into this thing called independent cinema independent cinema is more of a western concept actually mm-hmm. in india i think it was called the whole art film parallel movement as parallel such. movement new so, wave yeah. yeah so the parallel movement always had these topics you know like being shown like uh, upper caste lower caste uh, struggles rapes and all those things happening mm-hmm. which the mainstream audiences wouldn't want to see right. which is why they were tagged as parallel they're happening alongside a family drama mm-hmm. Now since it's the newer generation we don't like to be like you know parallel cinema and all we just call ourselves indie <laughs> and like kind of club ourselves in all these things so yeah i guess if it works for the uh, category it's great Ashurvas thank you so much thank you, man. this was great i really appreciate it